Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, I would like to go over a tool that I just open sourced called Notes. And basically, it is a dead simple way to create and organize your text notes from the command line. Now, you might be thinking, Jesus, Nick, does the world really need another note-taking application? And uh, I am here to say yes, yes indeed, because uh, I could not find one that worked in the way that I wanted to, so instead I just spent about an hour hacking up this bash script as well as all this documentation here, and I threw it all up on a Git repo because I think things are generic enough where if you enjoy using the command line and you enjoy using the terminal, you know, this is one of the easiest ways to get some ideas out of your head or from your system clipboard or whatever into a notes file. So instead of kind of just like, you know, selling you on the why or whatever, let me just go over a little bit about how this script works. But actually, you know what, before we go into that, you know, I do want to give you just like a TLDR on uh, like my note taking habits. So since 2001, wow, it's, it's a long time, uh, you know, it's Christmas Day right now, 2019. So, you know, 18 something years ago, what I started to do when it comes to creating notes is, you know, I got into this habit of always creating these like dated files where I have like, you know, the year dash the month and it's a some text file, right? Because back then uh, I was using Windows and I still am using Windows right now. But you know, back then I definitely wasn't using the command line or whatever. So typically like on my desktop, I would create a new file called like 2001.3.txt. Uh, and then for that month, you know, any cool thoughts that happened to go in my head, you know, this could be literally anything, right? It's just like interesting business ideas, weird, uh, weird random thoughts, um, bookmarks, like code snippets, like video game builds, links to video game builds, like uh, lots of video game stuff, especially in the early 2000s. But um, yeah, so like, you know, every month or so, you know, this is not perfect, right? You know, you can see there's like a whole entire year gap. Apparently during that year, I just decided I wasn't that interested in making notes. But you know, I basically did what I did, right? So I made these files and you know, this whole entire thing continued on until, you know, this month, like on the very bottom here, you know, this is um, December 2019. But, you know, for the past, I don't know, since I installed Vim, basically, nine or 10 months ago, you know, I really treat my entire development environment as being uh, terminal based. So, you know, besides a browser, really, I do everything from the command line. And I wanted to make it super, super easy to create notes from the command line without really disrupting my flow. Because check this out, like imagine you were just inside of, I don't know, some source code directory, like let's say you're just like coding some application, right? And really this doesn't need to be an application. You could just be browsing the web or doing something on your computer. And it's like, you have this great idea for a note. It could be literally anything, right? A business idea, a bookmark, a code snippet, all those things we talked about before and more. And now it's like, wow, you'd like to get that out of your head without really making you, you know, disrupt your workflow of what you're working on. So what you could do is with this tool, and I'm just gonna, I'm just going to run it now from the Git repo. So I'm, this is the Git repo on my computer now, but you know, but typically uh, the installation instructions on the readme, it shows you how to put it onto your system path. So you don't need to run it with a dot slash, but check this out. So let's just say you had like, you know, some, some, call it, some cool idea in my head and you just wanted to get that out. All you would have to do is run this note script with whatever arguments you want to pass here. Like this will literally literally become appended to a file that we're going to look at in a second. You know, you can quote it, you can not quote it, you can do one word, you can do many words, whatever you like. And keep in mind, this is only one way to create notes and we'll go into more in a minute. But now check this out. So if I do an LS again here, notice how now we have this dated file. So the other ones didn't have a day because let's be real now, you know, I was doing this by hand for years. I'm not going to make a new text file by hand every single day. But if we're using um, a script here, like, you know, it would, it is kind of nice to have this broken out by day. So it just created this new file here. And let me cat this thing out uh, for the 25th. Like all it did was it just basically, and if you go back to this one here, like I wrote some cool idea in my head. So it just basically appended some cool idea in my head and a couple of line breaks. So if I'm working again and I just want to write another note, right, I can do like another interesting note. Um, and keep in mind, it's still the same day, right? Like I'm recording this in real time. So if I rerun this file now or recat it out, you know, it just appended this new thing to the file. And, you know, this is really, really nice because like if you're working on something or whatever, it's like you just pop open a terminal, uh, you know, run whatever 
interesting notes command that you want to get it out there. And it just puts it into a dated file. And now like tomorrow, if you were to run this script, you would get a new text file for December 26th instead of the 25th. And it would just continue on. And now you have like this really cool, I don't know, like time stamped a log of your thoughts. And I kind of like having it based on per day, but if you didn't like per day and you still just wanted to do it per month for each file, you know, it's super easy to modify the script to do what you want. But now there's other things too, right? Because sometimes notes aren't just like a one line thought process, right? Maybe it's like you're copying something from, I don't know, Stack Overflow or a snippet of code somewhere, or you just want to like freeform write some notes like multiple lines and you don't want to be distracted. So you can just run the note script with no arguments at all, and it will create or open like today's date in a specific uh, notes directory. By the way, this notes directory is customizable. You can use whatever directory you want. I'll go over how to configure that uh, in a little bit. But you can see right here, it's the same text file that we just had. And you know, now you can do like blah, 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 blah. You can type whatever you want, right? Uh, and then you just save the file because ultimately, right? It's just a text file. It doesn't matter. Uh, there's nothing special about it. And it's very super unstructured. So this is what I really like about it. Um, the unstructuredness makes it really easy just to dump whatever you want from your brain into the file. Like you don't have to worry about syntax highlighting or like some weird, like not weird because I love Markdown, but you know, I don't have to worry about Markdown syntax. I don't need to worry about like code editor plugins to handle a new formatting thing. I don't have to worry about tagging. I don't have to worry about, you know, organizing these things because ultimately, um, yeah, all, none of that stuff really matters. What really matters is getting the thing from your head into the document and, Honestly, I have all of these text documents here from years and years and years ago. You know, using the power of grep, I can go through these and find interesting things that I want to find pretty fast. And I actually don't want to open up any of these on video because, you know, there's not like anything bad in them, right? It's like literally just text, but it's all sorts of stuff in here. Like back in the day in 2004, you know, I wasn't using password managers. So I have some like plain text passwords in there from like old video games that may or may not still exist today, like all sorts of stuff like that. And yeah, I just don't want to uh, drop that on camera, even though I could blur it out later, but why bother? I just take my word for it. There's a lot of notes here. In fact, I guess I could do, what is that uh, command? Is it D-U-S-H? Yeah. So there's like, you know, one and a half megs of text here just from the last <laughs> like two decades. That's really not that much, honestly, but yeah, it's something, you know, I really did do for many, many years. So you know, we just went over uh, running this command here with just the notes command, which is super simple to use. Uh, you know, it just uses your default editor. So whatever you have configured in your terminal for your editor, we'll open that editor and we'll go over configuration stuff in a bit. But now there's some other stuff too, right? It's like, well, you know, let's say I copy the output of this, like just these couple lines here. I just copy that to my clipboard. But now it's like, well, maybe I want to send what's in my clipboard over to my notes. So you can just do... Uh, in this case, you know, uh, I am running WSL Ubuntu 18.04, so I can just use xclip here, which is, this is basically just saying, take what's in my clipboard and pipe it into the note script. And now if I go back over here and I cut out that, uh, that notes from today, we would expect to see what I just had copied to my clipboard, which was, uh, this over here. So that works out quite nice. You know, I guess on Mac OS, what is it like PB paste or something like that? And, uh, you know, this also, the xclip works in Windows with WSL, and it's going to work on native Linux as well. So that's just one way to get stuff into, uh, well, another way to get stuff into your notes, right? And it doesn't need to be coming from your clipboard. It can be the output of, the, of any program, right? So I can, like, take the output of LS and just pipe it into notes and then recat this out over here, and there we go. There's a list of our stuff. Like, that's just the power of you know, using uh, Unix pipes and the command line to do all sorts of cool things like chaining together, you know, two completely independent programs to do some stuff. So that's basically like the three ways of getting notes into your file, right? You can either type out some stuff with a couple arguments, you can go with no arguments and just free for all type whatever you want, or you can just pipe something into the notes command. Now, check this out. Uh, before we get into configuration, you know, I just wanted to show you like how simple this script is. Like there is, you know, some shenanigans going on here with bash, right? But it's like, what is this? You know, it's 16 lines of code. Well, hold on. Uh, what's the new hotkey for that? I just did it. Is it F6? Yeah, there we go. Sweet. No more relative line numbers uh, on video. The line numbers are now static. So, you know, line 12 to 28, 
what is that, like 16 lines of code. And basically you just configure your notes directory. Now in this case, it's, it's in my case, it's slash D slash notes. That's where I like to keep them. Uh, you can change this to be whatever path you want. But also it reads in from a notes directory environment variable. So, you know, if you go to something like your bash RC file or equivalent, you can just export a notes directory to be some other path and it'll use that without you <clears throat> having to modify the script. And then down here, you know, it just grabs uh, your code editor. In in this case, you know, you can set this to, well, actually it's a Unix standard for the editor environment variable. So it's going to read from that. You know, I have mine set to Vim. For example, if I just do uh, echo editor here, you know, it just says Vim. And that's because in my profile, uh, that is set somewhere up here. So I just exported my editor to be Vim. So, you know, if you have a, a profile file, you can put that in there as well. Uh, the difference between profile and your bash RC is the profile is only going to get run once when your session starts, whereas your bash RC is going to continue to be run, you know, every time you start a new terminal session. So like if you opened up a new terminal, you know, you opened up another tab uh, or window a Tmux like that, then it would just execute your bash RC. But, uh, you know, I'll make another video maybe on, that, on those subtle differences another day. But for now, it's like, you know, all it really does is it just takes the current day and appends that TXT. Because again, you know, I could have used Markdown, but, you know, why bother with all of that stuff uh, when you can just dump unstructured text? And if you don't like the daily, the daily part, you can just remove the dash D and now it's going to be by month. And then it's like, well, you know, if you send no arguments to the script... Uh, so let's do the else, else condition first, right? It's like if you send no arguments to the script, uh, in this case, the else is if you do send arguments to the script, it just uses printf to print out, you know, all of those arguments that you sent with a couple of new lines, and it just appends it to the notes path. And the notes path is, you know, the directory that you set with the notes file, so the dated file. So I'm using greater greater here because that's the way to append to a file. Like you're redirecting whatever is over here into this file at the bottom of the file. So if you did only one greater than sign, that rewrites a brand new file overwriting what was there previously. But we don't want that. We want this file to grow over time. So we are appending it. But now it's like, well, okay, so let's say that we have no arguments, right? So now we have another condition in here where it's like, well, do we have anything coming from standard in? So basically, are we piping something? And if we are, then we do this. Otherwise, we just use eval to open up your notes editor. I mean, technically, I guess I could have just got rid of notes editor and just made it read your editor straight up. Um, yeah, maybe that's a change I'll make if you want to open up a pull request for that. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But in any case, you know, it opens up your code editor and it opens up the path that's over here. But in this case, you know, if standard in was detected, if you're sending something, you know, the output of another program to this program's input, then we just basically cut it out and we just add a couple of extra lines and then we append it to the notes path. So this is not something that I, I know exactly what's going on off the top of my head to explain it 100% clearly. Uh, I basically Googled like, you know, how to get, uh, like how to print out the standard in from another program in Bash and this is what I found. So the basic idea is you're basically running uh, both of these things, I guess, in some type of subshell. And you know, this gets evaluated. So we have the output of what came from standard in, like your clipboard, a couple of new lines that gets all rolled up into you know its own thing that then gets appended to the notes path. But you can see here, very powerful uh, couple lines of code, and that's really all there is to it. So there is a couple other things, right? Uh, there is a whole bunch of documentation here. That, uh, well, actually, I think it might be easier to look at the documentation on GitHub because it's basically just a readme file, you know? So I just kind of go to, I went over like my design goals and philosophy of, you know, you can use grep in friends to search through things later. And uh, yeah, I mean, in this case, it's like since the text is so unstructured, you can really use this like for whatever you want, right? You can keep track of like your general thoughts, make a diary, or you can make like these plan files that are very similar to what John Carmack did like way back in the day. So John Carmack, John, John Carmack is uh, a lead developer at the id company who, you know, they're responsible for making uh, Wolfenstein and Doom and the Quake series um, many years ago. And uh, yeah, so way back in the day, he used to make these text files like every day, like 1996. And he would just write down basically, you know, the work that he accomplished towards whatever he was developing at the time. Maybe it was a, a game engine for Quake or something like that. 
And it, it's almost like an, like an informal change log. But, uh, you know, as time went on, John, there's, you can also, uh, and I'll leave a link to this, by the way, uh, you know, he started doing it a uh, little bit more general purpose, like blog styles, I guess. And yeah, I don't know. It's a pretty cool idea. So you can you can use this note program to do things like that if you wanted to. But uh, basically for me, yeah, it's basically a brain dump, right? Every possible thing I ever think that is worth recalling later and is worth my time to even note it down, then I just drop it in there. And, you know, the, the readme just continues to tell you like how it works. And uh, this is also important to go over, like, what is this script not good for? Right. So I don't know if you know this, uh, if you've watched a couple of my videos, you probably know, you know, I make these like really long video courses, you know, eight, 10 hour courses. And they, those take a really long time, like six plus months often to, you know, plan it out and get things organized and ready to go to where I can actually record the video. But if you're making a project like that or a book or something like that, uh, and you want to create, you know, like your research, like your notes of, of what you plan to do for that, this is probably not the best idea because you know, if you're doing that over the course of three or six months, you're going to end up with like all these like millions of, not millions, right? You're going to end up with a whole bunch of like isolated date formatted files and they're going to be mixed in with all your other generic notes. And it's going to be really hard to bring all those together. So in those cases, right, like I recommend you actually just copy this script and, and make a new script called book or courses or something like that and, you know, modify it to what you need so that you're always writing out things to a specific file. And uh, sorry in advance if you heard that siren, there's like a, a firehouse siren going on, but it is over now. But yeah, so this is like one use case where that script is not good. Otherwise, personally, you know, I think it's going to work really well for just like a brain dump style notes. So installation, yeah, very simple, just as one liner. Uh, it's just going to copy things to your bin directory, then it's on your system path to where you can just run notes and you're good to go. Uh, you could also like git clone it and symlink things if you'd like. I didn't bother putting that into here because, you know, this may be a thing where you decide that you want to modify a couple lines in there, maybe. Technically, if we go back to the code here, um, you don't need to modify anything if you export the nodes directory because then it's going to override that and use that. Uh, everything else is pretty good unless you wanted to like modify the day to go away. But uh, yeah, so the only reason I didn't do the get clone instructions again is because if you modify the script, then suddenly, you know, that's going to be conflicted if you pull down a new release. But ultimately, like this script is so basic that it's probably really not going to change that much over time. And if it does, you know, I do have releases and a proper change log here. So you can always keep track of what changed. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of releases here. These are just get tags or whatever. But yeah, so it's like, you know, this is what it's good for. This is what it's not good for. Here's how you install it. Here's ways to configure it, right? You can either modify the script to put in your notes directory to whatever you want, or you can just, um, you know, export the uh, notes directory like this. And then there's a couple of use examples here, you know, just as a reminder of how to use it, right? We went over all of these. You just add some arguments or you can pipe stuff or you can just run the script itself. And yeah, that's pretty cool. So the reason why I like this so much in dealing with plain text is because it's just text, right? It's like, you know, if you wanted to go all out here, you can make a, a Vim mapping or some uh, key bind in whatever editor that you want. And you can just take the selected text, hit a hotkey, and then have that be appended to your notes and you don't even need to leave your editor. So I didn't do that yet because I literally just created this today. But, you know, that maybe, maybe that's something I do in the future. It really depends. Uh, but that wouldn't be a modification to the script. That would just be something that ends up in my vimrc file, uh, which would be my dot files. And I'll link those in the description as well. But uh, yeah, it's also, it's like, you know, you have the power of the command line uh, at your fingertips. Like there's no limit to what you can do with this text. So like if you were doing daily, uh, you know, the daily style of having things get output, you can just run this command here to cat all of them out basically combine them all and then just redirect that out to a new file called 12, uh, you know, 2019, 12. And now it's like you have this one file with all 12 months worth of notes. Or, you know, even better yet, if you prefer having monthly files instead of daily, then you can just change the date that, that we went over before. So that's like basically a quick rundown of how this script works. You know, I'm definitely going to be using it quite often now because I'm, you know, a little bit tired of having to create those text files by hand all the time. And uh, yeah, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know in the comments if, if you're going to be using it or if you have alternative ways to deal with notes that might even be better than this. Uh, also, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it does help. And on that note, happy holidays, stay safe, and I will see you in 2020.